come back to how it's made. Grateful elephants will know that ivory isn't used to make piano keys anymore. Pianists now tinkle the plastic. But few of the techniques involved in making a piano have changed over the years. How they're made is absolutely grand. Its sound is delightful, but just as beautiful is the piano itself. A piano is made up of inner and outer rims, a soundboard, treble and bass bridges over which the strings are stretched, and a heavy cast iron plate. To make a piano rim, automated rollers spread glue onto sheets of maple, coating both sides. Then the glue-soaked sheets are layered five to eight deep, depending on the model of piano. The wet layers of wood are fed into a rim press. An impact wrench powered by compressed air turns the clamp screws. The screws bend the wood into a piano rim form. The pressure on the layers is measured with a torque wrench. Steel arms reach across the wood, holding the shape while the glue dries. After 24 hours, workers loosen the machine's grip and the rim now holds its contour. Now it's onto what's called the conditioning room for more drying out. The piano rims stay in this warm, arid room for 30 days. To make the bracing structure, glued struts are placed inside the rim and pressure is applied with a clamp. The framework remains in this position for an hour while the glue dries. This piano will also have a tension resonator for extra support. Steel turnbuckles attach to a center hub. They're tightened with a wrench. Next, the soundboard is installed. Strings will straddle the bridges and transmit vibrations to the soundboard, which amplifies the piano's sound. Ribs are glued onto the soundboard. Wooden clamps are lowered over each rib to apply pressure while the glue dries. This takes about an hour. Next, the ribs are thinned around the edges with an automated cutter. This will allow the soundboard to resonate freely when the piano is played. Now the soundboard is positioned in a bridge press. Then, a bridge locating fixture is placed on top of the soundboard. This device holds the bridge in place while it's glued to the soundboard. After the two bridges are glued down, the soundboard is lowered onto the piano rim. A cast iron plate is hoisted onto it. It's important that this fitting is carried out correctly or the piano will not function properly. Then the plate is removed for finishing. Next, notches are cut into the bridges, which are now topped with a lubricant. This extremely sharp chisel cuts through the maple like butter. Each notch will cradle three piano strings, giving them freedom to vibrate. Now, glue is rolled onto the outside case of the piano, which is made of rosewood veneer on maple and it's fitted over the rim structure. A mechanical clamp holds it in place for an hour while it dries. Then the entire piano is placed on its side. Spinning cutters shape the arms that sit next to the keyboard into an elegant curve. This is called a vertical stroke sander. It's run along the side of the piano. Black polyester paint is applied, then buffed with this electrical cloth polisher. A cream is rubbed into it until you really can see yourself in this half-finished piano.